Honorable Dr. Priya Banjari, Madam, Principal Santaji Mahadale. She is also the head of the Department of English. Our distinguished uh, judges, uh, Dr. K. H. Pavarkar from MD College, Parel, Mumbai. Uh, Professor Nitin Gaikwar, sir, VMB College, uh, Nagpur. Uh, Dr. Sabam Dharampuri, sir, from Vidya Sagar College, Ramte. Uh, Sunil Ramteke, sir, convener, all the respected teachers students and dear participants. First of all, I would like to point out that uh, this uh, national book review competition is a part of uh, the golden jubilee celebration of the college. Now, when we thought about a, a, a program to be uh, held to mark the golden jubilee uh, celebration of the college to be organized by so, a very relevant suggestion was rendered that a book review competition should be organized because uh, we are living in an era of inform information technology. Computer, use of computers, use of internet is very good. But it has to be used wisely. If it is used for the purpose of copy-paste, cut-paste, then it is somewhat dangerous. The habit of reading has suffered a setback, has certainly suffered a setback in this era of information technology. You not only need to inculcate the habit of reading, you also need to inculcate the habit of critical thinking. And this was the, this has been the aim behind organization of this national book review competition. And uh, I would like to, uh, I welcome all the respected judges here, all the respected participants here, and uh, I request uh, Sunil Ramtiki, sir, to proceed further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Now I request, uh... Professor Nitin Gaikwar, sir, uh, to announce uh, results on behalf of uh, all the three judges. Uh, Nitin Gaikwar, sir. Uh, Ramteke, sir, um, those uh, names of those candidates um, have not uh, been received by me yet. Uh, are they the same I have one? sent you email, sir, actually. I sent... Uh, in the morning, I have seen. Uh, let me see it again. Okay. Ramteke, sir, if you have hmm. the names, you may uh, announce the names otherwise. Uh, actually, uh, uh, I request uh, Dr. Savan Dharma Puriva, sir, to announce uh, the prize. Dr. Savan Dharma Puriva, sir. Yes, sir. So, before I announce the winners of the competition, I just want to speak a little. Will it be okay, sir? No, no. Uh, we, we, you have to speak okay. later on, okay? Okay, sir. Okay, okay. I will properly okay. introduce you. <laughs> okay, first of all, I will just <laughs> announce the prizes. Uh, so, there were two categories in the competition. The first category was for teachers and research scholars. And another category was for students. Okay. Uh, Ramteke, sir, has already told us. Total 13 entries were there in the competition. And among those 13 entries, 8 entries were in the students category and five entries were there in the teachers and research scholar category. So first of all, I will announce the results for teachers and research scholar category. So second prize is secured by Dr. Dipti Jain Hakre, Assistant Professor Anjuman Girls Degree College of Arts, Nagpur. And first prize 
is secured by Jayashri Prem Kumar, research scholar, University of Mumbai. Jayashri Prem Kumar, madam, has secured 108 points out of 150 points, and Dr. J Dipti Jain Thakre, ma'am, has secured 87 marks out of 150. Okay. Now I, I shall announce the results for students category. Second position is secured in students category by Miss Apurva Navle, Indira Gandhi National Open University student. And she has secured 60 marks out of 150. First position in this category is secured by Miss Priya Jaiswal from Green Heaven Institute of Management and Research, Butiburi, Nagpur, and she has secured 86 marks out of 150. So I think these are the results for the com uh, competition. I congratulate all the winners in the competition. Over to you, Sunil, sir. Thank you, sir. I congratulate all the winners as well as uh, I congratulate all the participants uh, who have sent their reviews for this competition. Now, uh, as per uh, our promise that we will give an opportunity to uh, the winners to present uh, their reviews uh, in this program. Uh, so I call upon Ms. Apurva Naule who had secured second position in the category of students to make presentation, to make her presentation. Apurva Naule. Uh, thanks of all for, thanks, thank you so much for selecting me and good morning to you all. And here we go, I'll present my review to you. So the book I selected is The Monk Who Sold Ferrari by Robin Sharma. Uh, here is my review. A Monk Who Sold His Ferrari is one of the best books I have ever read. It was written by internationally acclaimed author Robin Sharma. This beautifully crafted fable comprises 13 chapters that tell readers an extraordinary story about Julian Mantle, a lawyer forced to face his out-of-balance life spiritual crisis provided readers with a plain but profound way of living life. The tale is told from the viewpoint of John one of the Julian Mantle's associate who admires the great success of Julian and inspires him to like to be like him. The dialogue between John and narrator Julian leads to the discovery of concepts of illuminated living. The book is all about their fictional characters, by the way. Though having wealth in his hands, his physical and mental health wasn't stable because of excess workloads. He couldn't manage his stress. After his health fell, he sold all his belongings, including his property, a red Ferrari, and goes to India, joins a sage in mystical land of Sivan, and discovers path of enlightenment. In it, Julian Mantle, a prominent lawyer who has made his fortune and reputation in his career, is the focus of the plot in the novel. In his successful life, a sudden heart attack creates a havoc. His work comes to stand still. Moved by an unexpected onset of disease, he becomes a such suspect to conflict and workplace strain. Thinking about the futility of material success, selling all his belongings, renouncing everything he owned, he decided to go on Himalayas for peace. Mantel traveled from village to village in India. On his journey, he heard about the great sages of Sivan. These new discoveries inspired him to venture to the Himalayan mountain where he come across the monk Yogi Raman with yogic power that lived there. He learns a powerful system to release his potential of his mind, body, soul, and learns to live his passionate purpose and peace. The mystic experience provide him with a new outlook of life, again, but in the way of that far more satisfying and meaningful than before, he decides to live his life. The core of book is seven virtues taught by Julian, taught to Julian by Yogi Raman, which are master your mind, obey your purpose, practice Kaizen, live with discipline, honor your time, serve others selflessly, and accept the present. 
Each of these virtues is covered in a separate chapter of the book. Many ideas present here are very powerful and should be utilized. Brilliantly blending ancient spiritual wisdom of the East and contemporary success principle of the West, the inspiring tale provides a step-by-step -step approach to live a life with greater courage, balance, abundance, and joy. The book has explained everything so effortlessly. While reading it, you will realize it has the most of the things projected are very magical. It will awake you and change your life in a significant one. It helps to realize that everything is within us. We have just to recognize it and remark your new journey. The book impacts us in such a way that you will start taking steps on your own. Many beautiful lessons have been taught so beautiful therein. The book discusses how to increase your happiness, lead a committed and compassionate life, value relationship and most resource and more resourceful. The book has turned out to be a bestseller and more than just a lovable novel. In it, Robin Sharma showcases the miracle and wonder of living a satisfying life through storytelling. It offers a step-by-step -step guide to live a greater confidence, equilibrium, abundance, and satisfaction. This is a nice novel from my point of view in a straightforward and concise way that it is easy to grasp and meaning of virtues is clarified. It's a great novel and one won't regret buying it. Thank you all. Thank you, Apurva. Uh, once again, con many congratulations. Uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Priya Vanzari, Madam, Principal and Head Department of English, Santaji Mahavidyalay, Nagpur. Uh, I welcome you, Madam. Now, uh, I request Ms. Priya Jaiswal, who secured first position in students category uh, to make her presentation. Ms. Priya Daiswal. Good morning, sir, and all the teachers. I am here to present my topic of book review, The Cars, The Origin of Our Disconnect is written by Isbal Wilkerson. Wilk this book describes racism in the United States as an aspect of a caste system of social satisfaction. Here, the author mentioned that the caste system is not just based on the caste and the gender, but also it is discriminated in color, hierarchy, and salary or job. These all things were the made, which made the difference in caste system. Wilkerson does so by comparing aspect of the experience of American people of color. She also Excuse compared... me, Priya. Actually, uh, you need to know uh, start your video. You are not visible. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. The book which I chose was The Cast, The Origin of Disconnect by Isbel Wilkerson. The book, the book described the racism in United States as an aspect of the caste system of social satisfaction. The book that tells us the difference which, which, which was made by the people on basis of color, hierarchy, caste, gender, and salaries and jobs. Mostly in America, the people were discriminated based on their color, which are blacks and whites. So people were made lower and upper due to their color. The author, Isbal Wilkerson, describes that these same things happen in India too, based on their gender, caste, and the upper and lower level. They compared the same as India and the Nazi of Germany. Like this in on eight pillars, divine will that is the people discriminated by the gods which they follow, and the heritability by the birth hierarchy. The, if the people are born in rich family, they will consider them as rich, even if they don't have the proper proper knowledge of. The next thing which she describes is the endogamy, that is prohibition of sex 
and marriage on the other castes or any other people which they were not knowing next thing they describes is the purity and the pollution in this way they describe that the lower caste people and the upper caste people have different works according to their caste nextly they describe the occupational hierarchy which is made by different which is made different by the of occupation and the jobs which were provided by them the next topic is dehumanization and the stigma the seventh pillar of the book is the inherent superiority that is restriction on clothing and designing the maid and follow them the next topic is the terror and the cruelty that is low caste people were meekly meekly doing the works which they don't wanted to de- do even after doing it so this book was referred from the warmth of the other sun that is casteism is not up to the class and gender this book was followed even in the color hierarchy and the salary and the jobs of the people so this book i thought was best as per me so i gave it the five star thank you thank you priya uh, for nice presentation once again congratulations to you uh, now i call upon dr deepthi zain thakre madam uh, who secured second position in the category of research scholars and teachers to make her presentation dr deepthi zain thakre madam okay am i audible sir i'm here yes madam right okay yes so good morning to the chairpersons of the event dr priya vanzari ma'am panel of judges dr k h bawar professor nitin gaikwad dr savan dharma purivar and dr nihal sheik and all the other dignitaries present on the occasion and my friends now it's my proud privilege to be chosen as one of the best reviewers in the book review competition organized by department of english santaji mahavidyalaya nagpur and uh, i like thank you for giving me the second position for the same Now the novel that I have uh, reviewed is called Room. It's a novel by Emma Donoghue. Now this novel was shortlisted, uh, shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize 2010, and it was also made into a movie in 2015. And when it was uh, a movie was made based on this novel, it had received numerous awards and nominations. now thanks to the organizers that have been given this opportunity to present my work in the presence of august audience i hope i am able to share the thrill that i experienced while reading this novel to everyone present here now i'll just go through my review as quick as possible now room is actually a poignant story told from the point of view of a 5 year old child jack was born in a room and stayed locked there with his ma until he was 5 now for jack room and his ma is his whole world the real world and everything else is tv or outer space now as soon as we realize the situation that jack is in we can immediately like we being uh, literature teachers or students we actually can re- immediately relate it with plato's allegory of the cave now jack in the novel is like those people who have lived chained to the wall of the cave all their lives facing a blank wall these people watched shadows projected on the wall from objects passing in front of a fire behind them and gave names to these shadows now these shadows are prisoners reality now they do not want to leave this prison for they know no better life now before we see the predicament of jack like jack who is the protagonist one of the protagonists of the novel a 5 year old child a prisoner of the cave let's go through the story of room in which it has already been stated that donaghue is at her best now donaghue emma donaghue the novelist has divided this novel into five parts the first being present the second is unlying the third is dying the fourth is after and the last part is living now we start with the first part that is present now the present starts with jack and ma living in a room 
the room which we later realize when we start reading the novel we actually don't know what uh, situation they are into but as we go uh, like so to the pages we later realize that it's actually just that room is just a garden shed 12 by 12 vinyl coated structure added with a soundproofed si sunlight and a security door through which they can never come out so they are locked in a room now jack and ma spend their entire day in a very fruitful way ma has taken care that even though they are confined to such a small space jack should never be sad knowing what he is missing now jack as i told you was born and brought up there till he was 5 so he knows no other thing apart from room now uh, her ma has actually made jack believe that room is the reality and there is no world outside in the room ma makes sure that jack is physically and mentally fit for that she plays various games with him like karate island simon says trampoline chess hopscotch and many more she also reads him various books both fiction and facts now she teaches him to add subtract multiply and divide and then they play various word games so that his vocabulary improves she also mutes the tv and asks jack mimic the characters on tv so that jack develops the understanding of people other than ma ma also does things in the room which she gives the name of exercise now which jack later realizes was her attempt to escape she screams at the top of her voice so that someone will hear and come to the rescue at night she gives signals from the bulb switching it on and off in case someone notices and save them from their plight but all her efforts are in vain now jacks the only connection with the outer world is the tv which they have in the room jack perceives everything in it to be imaginary as he thinks that room is the only reality now when ma has decided to escape with the help of jack she gradually starts telling him about the real world which is outside the room it is now when the second part begins when she starts unlining but this is not easy for jack now jack has been in the room thinking that room was the only reality until he was 5 so obviously it's not very easy for him as when he comes to know about the real world he is confused now he reflects i quote from the novel outside as everything whenever i think of a thing now like skies or fireworks or islands or elevators or yoyos i have to remember they are real they are actually happening in outside all together it makes me it makes my head tired and people to firefighters teachers burglars babies saints or suppliers and all sorts they are really in the outside i am not there though me and ma we are the only one not there are we still there so are we real so actually he starts doubting if we are real or unreal right unquote now with great difficulty ma has to convince to jack that she has not always been his mother that she was a kid like him living with her parents and brothers in the world outside and when she was 19 one day on her way to college she was abducted by this man old nick who has made her a prisoner in the room ever since she tried to escape but failed and in one such attempt even broke her wrist it was during her second year of imprisonment in the room after one stillborn baby birth that jack was born jack was the reason for ma's existence she lived with the hope that one day jack will grow up and both will be able to escape now we come to the third part that is the dying now in the third part ma convinces jack that old nick could go to any extent to make them suffer he had cut out their electric connections for 3 days moreover old nick has lost his job so ma is afraid that he'll abandon the house and she and jack will starve to death she convinces jack that if he wanted to be alive escaping from the room was the only option they had now when with this she starts training him to escape from the room with great difficulty she is able to convince jack to leave her and venture for this great escape alone here it's important to know that jack has not spent a single moment without his ma 
no he is an insecure child totally infatuated with his mom to an extent that we even observe the symptoms of oedipus complex moreover he has grown believing that room is the only place in the world no and ma the only human being apart from him and old nick a devil who visited the room occasionally now ma's plan is that jack will pretend to be very sick so much so that he needs medical attention but as feared by ma old nick does not take him to the hospital now they have their uh, plan b b already prepared so in plan b jack has to pretend that he is dead wrapped in a rug and when he is taken to be worried he has to jump from the truck and tell the first person he meets from the about the room and ma and she even hides a letter in jack's underwear in case he is unable to speak to the strangers now we know that he has never spoken to anybody else apart from ma so they uh, finally succeed in their plan and at last both ma and jack are finally out of their confinement and now the fourth part which is a very crucial part after uh, the part is named after of the novel begins now jack is out in the world with his mom but whatever little he has seen in the world he is not ready to accept he exclaims i quote yeah i have seen the world i'm tired now now he wants to go back to the room as suggested by dr clay being confined to the room from the time he was born he may suffer from many psychological problems although ma claims to have given him a perfect upbringing she doesn't realize that jack now suffer from separation anxiety even if he is not separated from ma he now has to share his ma with many he fails to get the undivided attention from ma as he got when he was in the room so when ma is taken for the internal check up jack has to i could grip onto the chair not to run after her unquote the other problems that he faces are the immune issues social adjustment sensory modulation and of course the spatial perception due to which he keeps on banging into every other thing now and then now he has been so familiar with his confined environment that he does he hasn't learned to gauge distance jack even gets irritated when he hears too many voices he hates when ma fails to follow any routine now jack's condition here we can actually relate it with the prisoner who is freed from the cave and comes to understand that the shadows on the wall are not reality at all for he can perceive the true form of reality rather than the manufactured reality that is shadows seen by the prisoners and so does jack who gradually realizes that the world is the reality ma his is not his ma alone she is a parent's daughter her brother's sister and she may have many more relations and roles to play in life and even he has to learn the ways of the world whether he likes it or not now he is disgusted with the thought that he will have to connect with so many people around him so although the world around is incomprehensible to jack it was the reality which he could not deny he ha- he keeps on thinking right now he thinks like i quote we have to be in the world we are not ever going back to room ma says that's how it is and i should be glad i don't know why we can't back can't go back just to sleep even how long do we still have to be here after now how many days and nights so he actually wants to go back so that he and his ma are together again now as plato says suppose someone drags the prisoner in the cave by force and uh, up the rough ascent and step way up and never stop until he could drag him out in the light of the sun now the prisoner would be angry and in pain and this would only worsen when the radiant light of the sun overwhelms his eyes and blinds him so is jack especially when his mother consumes poison when she is unable to face the truth that the only reason she gave birth to jack and made him spend 5 years in the confinement was so that she could escape had she really loved the child she would have sent him outside to be raised as a normal human being by someone else this accusation is too much for the ma 
to bear and even the readers realize at this point that there's some reality in this now the umbilical cord is finally broken when grandma takes jack to her place there too jack clings to the things that reminds him of the room and ma he has his ma's decayed tooth which actually no one can take him from now he clings to the rug from the room and all the things brought from the room are his treasures now we come to the last that is the final part of the novel that is living now in the last part that is living one finds that not only jack but ma has also become a social misfit she confines confides to dr clay uh, i quote it's perverse all those years i was craving company but now i don't seem up to it unquote and to which dr clay replies i quote the soul selects her own society then shuts the door unquote this reaffirms the theory of allegory of the cave that ma and jack who are out of their comfort zones find it difficult to adjust sensing at ma's discomfort jack often asks him her i quote do you wish sometimes we didn't escape unquote now with this ma also realizes that for the final closure of the room episode from their life she will have to take jack back to the room now after spending more than a month in this world when jack goes back to the room it's to bid goodbye to everything now this visit is the final leave taking as jack after having seen the real world realizes that the room was the image of the real world outside and as he had found difficult to comprehend the world when he saw it for the first time now he actually could not understand how he has spent his 5 years in that small little room now we can actually conclude uh, that uh in this novel especially we can conclude i have made this conclusion that ignorance is bliss as awareness leads to make life complicated and burdensome now i would recommend every one of you to go through this delightful read like it's a marvelous creation by emma donegue uh, that's all i want to say for today thank you thank you again to the organizers thank you so much thank you madam very nice presentation uh, and many congratulations once again now i request jayashri prem kumar a research scholar and research scholar of university of mumbai Uh, who had secured first position in the category of research scholars and teachers i call upon jayashri prem kumar to make her presentation jayashri yeah, prem kumar thank you sir can you hear me yes yeah yeah thank you uh, thank you everybody and uh, uh, first of all let me thank uh, santaji mahavidyalaya for letting me Uh, an opportunity to present my uh, book review through this competition uh, so the book which i have selected for review is uh, lady macbeth by susan king and uh, i have named the review as incredulity towards meta narratives through historicization of history uh, because this is a, a book which is based on not only history but uh, somebody who had taken that history and uh, had written a drama on it uh, so what uh, the first i will tell you the salient features of the novel uh, this novel comes under the genre of revisionary writing and it is an attempt of susan king uh, who published this novel in 2008 to offer a renewed perspective to the much villainized historical character who we know uh, even in this era Uh, we don't even know her real name which was lady gruath aka lady macbeth as lady macbeth we know her better by letting the now here susan king has uh, let the voice of gruath dominate the entire novel uh, this is a novelized form so this not only reveals the gaps and silences in the canonized history 
which was compiled by historians uh, like John of uh, Fordun and Andrew Benton, Hector Boyce, and uh, later uh, Hollingshed. But uh, Susan King's novel also challenges the dramatized version of the same offered by Shakespeare, uh, who we know as Bard of Avon, through his unforgettable play, Macbeth. Uh, the postmodern perspective uh, offered through King's novel points out the misrepresentation of Macbeth and Gruat by the greatest English playwright, not because he wanted to do it intentionally, but primarily because the historical material which uh, was used by Shakespeare for his play was Hollingshed's Chronicles, which itself was a gross uh, distortion of history, which has been pointed out by uh, the postmodern historians like Fiona Watson, Benjamin Hudson, Peter Ellis, and many others. So uh, King's novel uses the first person narrative technique instead of omniscient narration and lets Gruat tell her story, which though is in fictionalized, uh, fictionalized form, is based on King's intensive research on Gruat and Macbeth, the two historically maligned characters. Now, uh, the, what is the impact of this first person narrative technique? Uh, once the readers participate in this revisionary uh, journey offered by Susan King through this mini narrative, uh, and they begin to actively revision Lady Gruat based on the first person narrative of Gruat, so they become the active readers, not the passive reader, which was the uh, reading earlier to uh, literary theory. Uh, uh, maybe you can go to structuralism, but this is the post-structuralism uh, and post-modernist reading. So King's narrative technique compels the readers to take notice of Gruat as an individual in her own right. So consequently, the process of readers as active participants compels the readers, they cannot help but acknowledge Gruat's individuality as Lady Gruat, a rightful queen of Scots of 11th century who ruled alongside her husband, King Macbeth, as his equal for 17 long years. Now, this is nowhere mentioned in the drama as well as uh, the historical sources which are uh, referred uh, by many other uh, writers and dramatists. Now, uh, I'll go to the structure of the novel. The novel begins with the prologue, which is about the current position of uh, Dowager Queen Gruat, who after Macbeth's death by treachery at the hands of Malcolm III, who is now constantly threatening Gruat to either give in to his demand and accept his offer to become his queen, or relinquish the active political life and spend her days in a convent. Uh, then uh, next is the flashback technique is used where the uh, King's Gruat takes her readers on a journey which begins with her childhood. Gruat then introduces her readers to her royal lineage and also lets the readers know that her position as the only princess descended from the first King of Scots known as Kenneth Mac MacAlpin ensured her exposure to constant threats not only from the royal clans now we have to uh, visualize the, how, how it was in 11th century. It was a warrior culture. So she was constantly at threat because of her uh, royal lineage, not only from the royal clans, but also from other warlords who wished to covet the title of kingship with the help of her royal lineage. So at a very young age, Gruat finds herself thrown into a political turmoil, which entailed experiencing the worst tragedies in her life. However, Instead of letting herself to be victimized by the circumstances, which was the easy way to go, Gruat understands that a political game, uh, like Leotard's game you can uh, take example of, also offers an opportunity to be a player if one uh, aspires to be the one. So King's Gruat becomes one of the important players of the 11th century Scottish politics, who successfully carves her identity as a warrior queen. And then the novel ends with the epilogue, uh, which is the current situation where uh, she doesn't relinquish the political life, but for a time being, she uh, goes away from public life and she pursues her uh, the traditional craft, that is the magic and witchcraft. Uh, then next, I will come to the portrayal of Gruat as an independent woman. 
Now, though historical evidence related to Gruhat is only limited in the form of uh, one donation made by her along with her husband Macbeth to one priory at St. Andrews, but even that small piece of evidence displays the testimony of Gruhat's fiercely independent personality. Because along with Macbeth's name, which is written as per the custom or the culture, Scottish culture there, uh, that Macbeth's son of Finlap, Gruhat's name is also written as Gruhat, daughter of Bode. Okay, so it is not as a wife of Macbeth, but she had similar, that is the equality was there, which indicates not only the authority or power which she had as queen, but it also shows the equality which she ended under an independent woman. Uh, now, in spite of getting bogged down by this scant historical source, because there are no other historical sources written at that time, Susan King, the novelist, by taking help of interdisciplinary uh, literary sources like socio-cultural milieu, political and historical context, as well as the geographical framework during the era that Gruat lived in, lets Gruat tell her, uh, her story. So result is, in spite of not being equipped with enough historical record of Gruat, the narrative imbued with extra literary sources ensures that by seeing in their mind's eye, King's readers are compelled to actively involve themselves with the history as experienced by Gruat and Macbeth. Uh, then I'll come to reconstruction of vilified image of Macbeth through King's novel. Now it is worthwhile to note that King's Lady Macbeth is not just an attempt to deconstruct the vilified image of Gruat by revisioning it through postmodern mini narrative. But along with Gruat, King's postmodern mini narrative is also an attempt to deconstruct and reconstruct historical Macbeth, who in Shakespearean drama appears as an as a usurper, right? Who, in order to fulfill his uncontrolled ambition, treacherously kills Duncan in his sleep. But the real fact, real historical fact, which uh, uh, King's novel points out, that Macbeth had a legitimate claim to kingship, and in fact, his claim was better than Duncan. Because of Macbeth's marriage to Gruat, the only princess descended from the first Scottish king, Kenneth MacAlpin. Also, Duncan was not uh, that older uh, persona what has been shown in the drama, but he was uh, just three or four years older than Macbeth. So he was in his 30s. And Duncan's six years reign was filled with internecine skirmishes and external wars also. So it was completely political turmoil which the uh, Scottish experienced during his uh, tenure. Further, Duncan was killed in a fair battle, okay, which decided the future kingship for Macbeth, who ruled for 17 peaceful years. Uh, then I'll come to some other important features which uh, we get to uh, know, or get to know through this novel. Uh, through this King's novel, one gets to see the friction between the dominance of rigid from a, a form of Christianity, which was uh, practiced by Romans and Anglo-Saxons, and the liberal form of Christianity, which was accepted by Celts, which came to be known as, again, individualistic Celtic Christianity. Uh, Grua's first-person narration also points out that when it ca uh, came to the position of women in society, Celtic Christianity and Celtic culture was much more li liberal than the rigid Anglo-Saxon and Romanic form of Christianity. Again, another point is it revisions the role of witches, okay, the famous witches of uh, Shakespearean uh, drama. Uh, those witches are women who were immortalized as evil or wicked creatures and whose identity as women too was questioned, as uh, we can see uh, through Shakespeare's drama. But witchcraft, as it appears in King's novel, was not diabolical or satanic activity, but it was a skill the traditional skill possessed by few people, either with the help of their innate ability or power acquired through learning of traditional knowledge. And in fact, uh, a King's novel points out uh, uh, the importance of resistance to grand narrative because it points out to its readers the necessity of historicization of history in order to find the reasons behind terming this traditional craft as demonical in the later centuries. So here the uh, role of religion comes into limelight. Uh, King's novel convincingly points out that canonical history scripted by Eurocentric patriarchal culture remained grand narratives due to their constant production and reproduction uh, and thus were naturalized as foundationalist narratives uh, for centuries and they remained unquestionable histories. 
so king's novel also points out that once whose history was written were not there to object it or defend it not because they were subalterns who couldn't speak but because they belonged to the culture which still believed in oral history right uh, the oral history which was prevalent at that time so their culture and history passed on for ages through bardic tradition so consequently for them bards were the chroniclers preservers as well as propagators of their ancient culture and tradition so what we see is that the ink which described history and culture of those who had not yet begun to script their own history was through jaundiced lens uh, uh, which was portrayed through uh, which portrayed them the inscrutable people and their culture was uh, portrayed as barbaric savage and paganic which needed intrusion of civilizing nation the one which happened with india under colonization so we can see lady macbeth as a revisionary novel by susan king which comes across as an endeavor by king to historicize the history by letting lady gruath aka lady macbeth weave her own micro narrative to describe not only the history politics religion and culture prevailed during the era that she lived in but through gruath's first person narrative king also exposes the gaps in the canonical narrative which were instrumental in making both macbeth and lady macbeth that is gruath as metaphors of utter villainy and as ruthless usurpers of power so uh, this is my review which i have done of lady macbeth uh, i strongly recommend that you all if you go through the novel you will also uh, relate to the novel the way i could relate it thank you so much thank you jayashree uh once again congratulations uh now we are moving towards you know, uh our guest of this uh, program uh, who also acted as a judge of this uh, book review competition uh let me introduce our first judge mr nitin gaikwad sir Nitin Gaikwad sir is an associate professor of professor and head department of English VMB College Nagpur he has been rendering his services as a teacher of English there for last 18 years uh basically uh, he has done his MSc geology and later on uh, MA in English and MA in Ambedkar thought Uh, i know him uh, from my hostel life as an upsc aspirant and uh, even selected as a cbi officer in uh, 2001 but he did not join the services and uh, later on he joined uh, there in vmb college uh, he is also a good artist and many of his uh, portrait paintings are worthy uh, to be displayed in art gallery and exhibitions uh i request gaikwad sir uh, to say a few words on this occasion uh, thank you ramtekesh sir <coughs> uh, respected chairperson teachers participants and dear students first of all i congratulate the winners of this uh, book review competition and uh, i appreciate all the other participants for writing great reviews uh, going through them was really a wonderful experience a rewarding one uh, friends if you are an avid reader uh, you can easily discern the nuances of writing and then gradually you can understand the essence the theme it becomes easy for you to summarize objectively evaluate and recommend other readers by telling them why a particular piece of writing is worth reading and this is what a reviewer does and this is what a book review is uh, <clears throat> i am not uh, sure about uh, the uh, i mean application of theory as uh, one of the Uh, criteria in this uh, book review competition but uh, i can certainly say that uh, one of the participants so beautifully yoked the various elements of a narrative into the framework of a theory um, he is liota 
French theorist, philosopher, and uh, that made all the difference. Uh, friends, uh, reading, reading is important, but uh, writing to all the other participants who uh, couldn't make it, uh, I, I would like to tell them that uh, uh, writing is more important than reading. Reading is, of course, important, but writing is more important. It gives order and clarity to your thoughts. Uh, I remember what the philosopher says about this. He says, he's Marlo Ponte. He says, my own words take me by surprise and teach me what I think. So this is the virtue of writing. So dear friends, go on writing. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have with us Dr. Savan Dharma Puriwa, sir, Associate Professor of English, Vidya Sagar Arts College, Ramtek. Sir is uh, an Associate Professor of English uh, at Vidya Sagar Arts College since uh, 2003. And uh, I know him as a good debater, a poet as well as a short story writer. Sir has published uh, one uh, book of short stories born, uh, titled Born in the Garbage in 2014. Uh, and this book received two awards, two state level awards one by Marathi Wangmai Parishad and uh, second Abhiruchi Gaurav Puraskar. Uh, the, he has edited, sorry, he has uh, uh, written three books, Scholars Endeavor in 2018, uh, which is a compilation of research papers on different subjects. Then Saksar uh, Tate Abhiyan uh, is an edited book by Dr. Dharma Puriwar, sir. Uh, then he also wrote one book, Vivekananda and his optimism in 2019. He also contributed uh, his articles uh, under a weekly column uh, titled Worth Words in Marathi newspaper, Maharashtra Times. Uh, I welcome you, sir. Uh, now I request uh, Dharma Puriwa, sir, uh, to say a few words on this occasion. Dharma Puriwa, sir. Principal of Santaji Mahavidyalaya and organizer of this national book review competition, respected Dr. Priya Vanjari, ma'am, member of Board of Studies in English, RTM Nagpur University, Respected Dr. Nihal Sheikh, sir. Honorable judges of this competition. Respected Dr. Pawar, sir. Respected Dr. Gaikwad, sir. Convener of the competition, Professor Sunil Ramteke, sir. All the participants from teachers, research scholar, and students category. A very good afternoon to all of you. At the very outset, I remember the words from great thinker and social worker Vinova Bhave, who once said, human beings remain students till the end of their life. And when I think about this statement, I find it very true, very relevant when it comes to the matter of books because books are the teachers who try to teach something throughout our life. And I must congratulate the organizers of this national book review competition for organizing such a worthy competition, such a valuable competition as a part of their golden jubilee celebrations. Because since last year, we are going through a time, we are going through an age where we have been
compelled to get locked down inside the boundaries of our houses because of the corona pandemic and this pandemic has taught us a, what we can say great deal of different things and we were going through a, what we can say a process of a stress or a, what we can say a different kind of mentality and in this time of stress in this what we can say pandemic time for many of us books acted like the stress relievers in one of the articles which was published in the february issue of wall street journal elizabeth bernstein writes that during the pandemic time books have acted to relieve the stress of human beings so when the people read different kinds of what we can say went into the shelter of the books at that time books tried to take us away from the pandemic stress and at the same time she also says that people find it harder to read now means plenty of books are being written plenty of books are being uh, what we can say published every year but at the same time the people or the readers are find it difficult to get time to those reader uh, uh, time to get uh, time to what we can say read those books and that's why elizabeth elizabeth bernstein in her article says that one has to cultivate the habit of reading the books and these books can take you away from your day to day tensions take you to a different world and at the same time teach you to live the life in more happy and successful way so that's why i think that this competition which was organized by santaji mahavidyalaya is really a unique competition really a worthy competition which takes a reader with what we can say with which inspires us to read the books to review the books and at the same time go into the realms of the books then i can say that when we think about judging this particular competition so i felt extremely privileged to be a part of ju judging panel with dr gaikwad sir and with dr pawar sir there were in all 13 entries for the competition eight entries were there for the students category and five entries were for the teachers and research scholar category all the entries which came for the sake of teachers and research scholar category those were very good excellent and up to the mark but at the same time the student who try to make the reviews of the books those were also tried their level best i can name some what we can say students that neuroz hazare then sakshi jayprakash apurva navle priya jaiswal these people have really what we can say written or made the excellent review of the book but at the same time you should take into account that writing the review of the book making the critical appreciation of the book and writing the summary of the book is a different thing so many of the students what they have done they have try to summarize the book in their own words in order to make the review of the book so first of all you should think that there is a difference between writing a summary of the book and writing a review of the book then i can say that after all it's a competition and someone has to get prize someone has to what we can say remain at second place someone will not get any prize in the competition but at this but most important thing is that our efforts are very necessary you try to read a book you try to make the review of that particular book and that is the outcome of this particular competition and then in marathi it is said that vatsal tar vatsal if you read then only you can exist and if we want to exist in this world if you live our life in a proper manner in a successful or a happy manner books can be a great help to all of us and that's why i once again congratulate the organizers for organizing such a unique competition on review of the book and at the same time i thank them for giving me an opportunity to work as one of the judges for this competition i will end my words with a poem by great shair sabdar hashmi kitabe he says kitabe karti hai baatein kitabe karti hai baatein beete zamane ki kitabe karti hai baatein beete zamane ki duniya ki insano ki kitabe karti hai baatein beete zamane ki duniya ki insano ki aaj ki kal ki aaj ki kal ki ek ek pal ki aaj ki kal ki एक एक पल की खुशियों की गमों की 
खुशियों की गमों की जीत की हार की खुशियों की गमों की जीत की हार की प्यार की मार की प्यार की मार की क्या तुम नहीं सुनोगे इन किताबों की बातें क्या तुम नहीं सुनोगे इन किताबों की बातें किताबें कुछ कहना चाहती है किताबें कुछ कहना चाहती है तुम्हारे पास रहना चाहती है किताबें कहना चाहती है तुम्हारे पास रहना चाहती है किताबों में चिड़िया चहचहाती है किताबों में चिड़िया चहचहाती है किताबों में खेतिया लहलहाती है किताबों में खेतिया लहलहाती है किताबों में झरने गुनगुनाते हैं किताबों में झरने गुनगुनाते हैं परियों के किस्से सुनाते हैं परियों के किस्से सुनाते हैं किताबों में रॉकेट का राज है किताबों में रॉकेट का राज है किताबों में साइंस की आवाज है किताबों में साइंस की आवाज है किताबों का कितना बड़ा संसार है किताबों का कितना बड़ा संसार है किताबों में ज्ञान का भंडार है किताबों में ज्ञान का भंडार है क्या तुम इस संसार में ही जाना चाहोगे क्या तुम इस संसार में नहीं जाना चाहोगे किताबें कुछ कहना चाहती है तुम्हारे पास रहना चाहती है किताबें कुछ कहना चाहती है तुम्हारे पास रहना चाहती है एंड आई कैन से दैट दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ लिविंग विद बुक्स हैज बीन गिवन बाय दिस कंपटीशन एंड वी ऑल शुड कंटिन्यू विद द हैबिट ऑफ रीडिंग एंड रीड मोर एंड मोर बुक्स एंड थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग मी पेशेंटली थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सावन धर्मपुरी वासर फॉर योर एनलाइटनिंग रिमार्क्स uh we are very uh, privileged to have with us a very distinguished personality dr kishan pawar sir kishan pawar sir is an associate professor of english uh, maharshi dayanand college parel mumbai uh, he has been uh, teaching there since uh, 1996 uh, his vast experience of uh, around uh, 22 years uh, he is uh, he has also uh, written several books uh, benson may be few the plays and poems of t s eliot uh, the hindu perspective the plays and poems of t s eliot the buddhist perspective the plays and poems of t s eliot the christian perspective he also wrote uh one book of poetry in hindi uh, titled tisnagi uh and second uh, book of poetry is age of pace then uh, he also wrote one book uh, titled t s eliot's poems a heap of broken images sir he is also a script writer uh, for uh, hindi feature films uh, he has scripted uh, two hindi feature films mantan ek kashmakas which was released on 6 january 2006 and tara the journey of love and passion released on 12 july 2013 uh, which celebrated golden jubilee week and also nominated for the 87th academy awards uh it was nominated also for oscars in 2014 in foreign language film category uh on behalf of santaj ji mahavidyalay i uh, cordially welcome dr pawar sir uh i request dr pawar sir uh, to say a few words on this occasion dr pawar sir thank you very much sir <laughs> uh good afternoon everyone uh i hope i am visible and audible can you see me all and can you listen to me yes sir yes there is a not seeing myself on the screen please let me know if uh, you can see me and if you can hear me yes sir can i continue yes sir, yes, sir. yes sir yeah okay thank you uh i congratulate uh, santa ji mahavidyalay for having uh, organized this very unique competition for the researchers 
and imbibe this uh, this habit of analysis amongst the students for the students too. Uh, uh, respected uh, Priya Vanzari, Madam, Ram Teke, Sir, Nitin Gaikot, Sir, uh, Savan Dharma Puriwar, Sir, uh, Nihal Sheikh, Sir, uh, dear my teacher colleagues, participants, and dear student participants. I congratulate the winners and commiserate those who could not make their mark. Uh, anyway, competition is part of the job, and it's a very difficult part on the side of the judges to choose very few of them. Actually, uh, for Connected. Oh God! Sir, you the are. It is gone. You are, Am I there? Yes, sir. Your voice is breaking. <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, uh, this network is fluctuating. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay uh, sir, continue, sir. Am I back? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> this is the beauty of this online teaching. You know, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly you disappear. Suddenly you reappear. <laughs> Okay, and uh, yeah, I was telling you. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Uh, you know, okay, it's, uh, the beauty of this conversation. Am I back? No, sir. Hello. You were yeah, not audible. Because, uh, yeah, this. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm. Uh, my network is fluctuating. Am I back now? I think it is there now. Yes. Okay. okay sir. Can I continue now? Am I yes, audible? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry again. Can't help it. Okay. So I just wanted to share with you what exactly is a book review and what is the difference between a book review and a research paper. You should know as the students. See, a book review is like writing a review of a cinema. You have seen such, uh, you know, judgments or such reviews of cinema on Saturday when the cinema is released on Friday, the book, uh, the, the cinema reviews appear in the newspapers on Saturday, right? Sometimes they appear on Friday also uh, because the judges watch it a, before, a, a day before, they know uh, it's released. What do you see there? They tell you three things. Number one, what is the cinema all about? Should you watch or should you not watch the cinema? And what are the gains and faults or what are the gains and losses in the cinema as the cinema maker or the director succeeded or not. In a book, when you write a review of the book, you should tell the readers, should they read it or should not they read it, number one. Number two, you also should be able to tell the writer if you have that ability, of course. If you understand really what writing is, you should also be able to tell the writer 
whether the writer has succeeded in his attempt or not. But then this is very difficult task. Being the book reviewer, you may not be a writer of any book because you should know at the same time, it takes a long, long hard work to write a book. A minimum period to be spent on book writing, novel writing is minimum 24 months for me, of course. That is what I think. There are some writers who write the books overnight also. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about a good book, which requires at least two years of hard toil, hard work to write a novel. And maximum, I have also seen the writers who have spent more than 10 years on a single, you know, writing. So the writer who writes for so many years, passing a judgment through one or two pages, it actually not a fair job. It is actually a, you know, a punishment to the writer. No reviewer can put the whole you know, hard work within one or two pages. But at the same time, you have to be a very balanced one to tell the readers what to see in the book, why to read the book, and why to avoid the book if the book is avoidable. So keep these things in mind. In the very first para, you should be able to tell the title of the book, the writer, the publisher, the year it was published, the pages of the book, how many pages are there. Second paragraph, write a very short summary. Summary in the sense you should not reveal the whole story. Summary is like writing a one-liner. You should know difference between one-liner and a summary. Okay, to simplify this, I'll give you an example. You remember the picture Shole? I hope all of you have watched it. Shole of Amitabh Bachchan and Dharmendra, right? You know the story. There are two friends and there is Gabbar and then there is this revenge play and all. But what is the one-liner of the movie? If I ask you to write a one sentence and tell the whole story in one sentence without revealing the, the details, the end or the suspense. How can you write this in a sentence? Well, the one liner of Shole is that a retired police officer hires two goons, two goons means two gundas, to take his personal revenge. That's all. That is one line story of Shole. I repeat, remember, and listen carefully. A retired police officer, don't tell the names of the characters here. One line means only one sentence about the whole story. Like that, you should be able to tell the story of the whole book within one sentence. And that sentence should be so catchy that it should catch the hold of the readers and the reader should decide to read the book after reading that one line. So what did I say about Shole? A retired police officer hires two goons to take his personal revenge. Full stop. You have personal revenge nikal ke liye, a retired police officer do badmashon ko hire karta hai, bhaade pe leta hai. Yehi hai na Shole ki story. Ya kuch aar hai. Ab tum bolo ke ke isme basanti kaha hai, isme gabbar kaha hai, wo sab important nahi hai. You should be able to tell the gist, the very core, the very crux of the story. That is called one-liner. And that is the art of writing review of a book, review of a cinema. You can make it a profession also. Cinema writers, uh, cinema you know, review writers get ample of money for writing this. This is an art. It requires a lot of practice. So I congratulate uh, Santaji College to, uh, you know, uh, to have arranged this beautiful competition. This will give you a new way of earning money also if you make it a profession. The second thing you should remember when writing the review of the book is do not behave like a mercenary or a missionary or a leader or a social worker or a social changing 
element you know change element in the society like you are the boss of controlling all the you know um, principles and uh, moralities of society don't i mean say that uh, the writer has done this wrong thing the writer has done this badly the writer has done this good uh, thing or uh, you know do not behave like a a uh, you are none of them you are just a reader of the book and you are experiencing your experience you are sharing your experience with the readers the only difference between you and all the readers is that you are sharing your experience of reading the book earlier to those who will read the book later on what i mean to say here is that you are not greater than the writer remember the writer unmute unmute he has given a whole philosophy Uh, you know a, a whole body of knowledge to the society so you have no right to slaughter that you don't have any right to cut it short you have to support writing but at the same time writing should be so balanced that you should not be uh, like a uh, bias you know or prejudgmental about that and this quality comes only after reading and reading and reading and reading dr ambedkar used to say that the people of your age your age means you are the students age you know i'm not not talking about the teachers who are the participants i don't have to pay, teach the teachers how to write the review they already know it and uh, they they know you know better than you you are the student i'm talking to the students participants Dr. Ambedkar said that the students of 17 to 20 age groups should be able to read one book of 100 pages in a day. And you should be so habitual, you should be so, you know, uh, a devoted lover of the books that you should have your own library you should purchase the books and you should not um, i mean feel uh, like tired of reading the books because the more you read the better you can think and the better you think the better human being you can grow into it is the reading only that gives you a foundation to your thoughts uh, so please remember this i uh, again congratulate all of you the participants and the college again for organizing this i end my uh, my observation with a quote from francis bacon who writes about the books he says some books are to be read some books are to be read then some books are to be chewed then some books are to be digested and some books are to be swallowed to be to be swallowed and some books are to be digested so you should treat the books like this on these different levels if the books are there really to be digested you should digest the books you know for your information let me tell you william shakespeare who had studied only till fourth standard and anna bhau sathe in india also did not see the face of the school i think he went for only one day in the school but you know his writings and you know shakespearean writings as well so education and your degree has nothing to do with your thinking your thinking comes your foundation of your thoughts comes out of your meditation you should be able to meditate on what you read there was a book called metamorphosis that book metamorphosis was made by heart by william shakespeare when he had nothing to read he had only one book that metamorphosis and he read that book for so many times it became by heart he by hearted it he learned it by heart you should be able to read the book of your choice 
so many times can you read that do you have that page turns ask this question to yourself and uh, this habit this hobby this love for the books will never fail you this will never let you down this will only of course give you a upliftment and upliftment in your life and will take you to the heights of success thank you very much ramtek yes sir uh, for having invited me as a judge and uh, all the best to all of you thanks a lot thank you very much sir for your enlightening observation so before we uh, before we moving towards uh, the concluding part of this uh, program uh, i would like to announce that uh, the uh, winner of this competition will get uh, cash prizes uh, through upi transfer or uh, net banking uh first uh, prize uh, winner will get uh, one th- rupees 1000 in cash and uh, second prize uh, winner will get uh, 700 in cash and all the participants will uh, get certificates of participation and we will send it to send them to their respective email address okay uh so uh last but not the least we are now you know uh, leading towards concluding part of uh, this program uh, i request dr nihal sekh sir uh, to make formal vote of thanks of this uh, program dr nihal sekh sir okay thank you sunil sir uh this uh, national book review competition organized by department of english uh, santaji mahavidyalaya nagpur as a part of uh, golden jubilee jubilee celebration has uh, concluded very successfully um i would like to extend my thanks to dr priya vanjari ma'am principal and head department of english santaji mahavidyalaya nagpur for uh, being the motivating force for organizing it so effectively i would like to i am thankful to all the respected judges dr kishan h pawar sir um associate professor maharshi dhyan the college parel mumbai professor nitin gaikwal associate professor vmb college nagpur dr savan dharmpuriwar associate professor vidyasagar college ramte for uh, they are for sparing time to evaluate the review submitted by the dear participants my thanks are due to my colleague sunil ramtek sir convener who took painstaking efforts in organizing it so effectively i am also thankful to all the teachers all the participants all the students and all those who have contributed directly or indirectly in successful organization of the event with the kind permission of the chairperson this uh, concluding ceremony comes to an end thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you everyone thank you once again thank you